I'm your host, Chef Jake Osborne, on the show where we put food safety first, Michigan community second, and serve up delicious food to follow. We're here at the gorgeous downtown Chelsea location of Agricole Farm Stop, a mecca center of local food uh, for farmers and chefs alike. Today, we've got our guest, Grayson Golding. Uh, he's a graduate of a Celine High School Pro Start program and a Chelsea local, and we're gonna be preparing a bechamel mother sauce mac and cheese. Uh, he also is a student of Schoolcraft Culinary College, and we'll be right back when My Kitchen with Jake continues. Okay, why don't I take this, and why don't you okay. put the chicken in the fridge? I'll do that. And chicken and always goes, raw chicken always goes in the very bottom of your refrigerator. And why is that, okay. Laura? Oh, well, there's a little issue with cross-contamination. And gravity loves you it, You really it? want to think about bloody chicken, and if it drips mm -hmm. on your other food, then that's going to be a real issue. Out here with the squad, everybody trying to go here to party, trying to know. Hey, we putting on a show, trying to catch a vibe. We do this every time, like, na 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 This is where I'm going to be, na 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 Never ever going to be, na 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 You ain't no limit for me, na 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 Looking for the perfect weekend getaway? Love Lansing like a local. And we promise, you'll love Lansing just as much as we do. We are connected to our lake here on shoreline, all 93 miles of it. Hidden bays and marinas dot our shores. Points of entry to our world. Open waters and waves, alive with people at play. Inspiration floats on sparkling waves. We are in awe of its strength and in love with its allure. We nurture it, play in it, savor it. Huron County Water. My Michigan TV is streaming everywhere on Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and more smart TV apps. My Michigan TV is on your phone too. Take us with you wherever you go. Just search for My Michigan TV on your favorite app store or visit mymitv.com. All Michigan, streaming everywhere. My Michigan TV. Welcome back to My Kitchen with Jake, sponsored by the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association Education Foundation and the MichiganFoodSafety.com website. Today, I'm hanging out with my pal, Grayson Golding, a graduate from Chelsea High School, uh, but you went to Celine High School's CTE program, Correct. right? And that's where he studied ProStart. 
Pro Starts a curriculum set on uh, by the National Restaurant Association as well as the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association as a CTE program for your last two years in high school. So he spent half of his day while he was in high school, just as I did, I'm actually an alumni too, mm -hmm. um, in a culinary program, getting career readiness training. So he's an expert when it comes to food safety and food. So today we are preparing a bechamel mac and cheese. Bechamel is a mother sauce. It's a French mother sauce. There's five of them. Do you remember what they are? I do. Bechamel. Velouté. Velouté. Hollandaise. Hollandaise. Red or tomato. Yeah. And then brown or espagnol. Espagnol. Yep. So he's got those down. With each of those five mother sauces, there's at least another five secondary sauces from each one. So when we're making our bechamel mac and cheese, we're more or less making a Mornay mac and cheese. Mornay is when you add cheese to your bechamel sauce. Also a great way to make Alfredo, right? Oh yeah. So <clears throat> before we start our recipe, we're going to go back to our core values, which is food safety first, Michigan community second, and delicious food to follow. So step one, food safety. So we're gonna go ahead and wash our hands and we're gonna clean off our surface. Okay. If you wanna borrow the sink for a minute, All I'll right. get our surfaces cleaned and then we can switch around. Sound like a plan? Awesome, sounds While good While we're doing that, why don't you tell Straight me down. a little bit about what you've been learning over at Schoolcraft. Yeah, so I right now am in a butchery class. Uh, oh, this cool. Is, this is my fifth class uh, in my first year at Schoolcraft. And we're just going through the basics of uh, how to fabricate uh, animals, or like once you get the primal cuts of an animal, how to bring them into their subprimal cuts. So a primal cut would be like uh, the leg or the shoulder from say yeah. a pork, and then the subprimals are where you take it from there down into the more usable portions of the meat. Do um, you have a favorite meat you've done so far? Uh, I've really enjoyed doing fish. We've learned how to do, there are two types of fish, there's round fish and a flat fish. Yeah. Uh, a round fish, you get two fillets from, that would be like uh, a, a, a salmon or like bass or something like that. And then a flat fish yeah. would be like a sole do or Dover sole or say a halibut, and you can get four fillets from those kinds of fish. Nice. So I really enjoyed learning about that and doing that. It seems like you've actually learned it. Oh yeah. So you yep. ace that part of it, yep. the sounds of it. I and have. sanitation for butchery is huge, right? It is, yes. I mean, you're, you've got to think about when it's harvested, how quick it gets cold, mm -hmm. how long you're keeping it cold, whether it's dry aged, yeah. there's there's so many things. And there then are. you gotta think about what temperature you're cooking it to, right? Yep. So for fish, what temperature? 145. 145, yeah, spot on, good yeah. job. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick off our recipe for today. Alrighty. So you're doing bechamel mac and cheese, but you're going to lace it with butternut squash, that right? That's correct. And this butternut squash, she's organic. She is from Second Spring Farms, up near Traverse City, close to the Leelanau Peninsula. Right. Um, which is awesome. That's a beautiful spot of our state. Correct. Um, it should be a really delicious butternut squash. So first, what are we going to do? We're going to cut it in half, the boil way. it, and roast it? Correct. And I saw that you have a boo-boo. I do. Yeah, I think that it, you have a boo-boo. I do have a boo-boo. <laughs> I think it's important that we talk about how to protect your food from a boo-boo. Correct. So as you can see, Grayson has his pinky, because he's fancy, yep. wrapped with a Band-Aid and stuffed inside of a glove. The entire time we're cooking, Grayson's going to have to keep that glove on to eliminate any potential contamination, whether it be physical contamination from the threads in the Band-Aid, the physical Band-Aid itself, or any of the whatever's underneath yeah. it, right? Yep. Your, your bodily fluids. Yes. So we are going to be cooking this so his one hand is not gloved. That's the reason behind that. So go ahead and show us how you're going to prepare this butternut squash. I'm just going to take that off real quick so my knife doesn't have to cut through the stem there. Yeah, it's got a little bit more of an ugly spot. Oh, it does. I'm going to okay. go ahead It's and... just from the stem. You yeah. can hack it off. Alrighty. We'll so... give that to my brother's pigs. They'll love it. <laughs> so the next I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half. Um, and then this will allow it to be able to roast. If I can get through it. There butternut squash are so hard. They are. A lot of people won't use them because they're such a risk. I mean, you yep. can cut yourself easy with them. You can. But doing it in this method, rather than trying to skin it with the knife on the outside, yep. eliminates the slip hazard and the cut hazard. It does. So next you're going to go ahead and core it out, right? Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and take the seeds out and then, because uh, it's not, and in our recipe you're not going to want to eat these. You can save these for use later or you can uh, toss them if you don't have use for them. I think we're gonna go ahead and save them in case we use them for anything else in the future. Do you want to grab me a bowl for that? Jake, yes. Um, 
So roasting it also will help uh, to take the skin off once it's been roasted. It's not going to be as difficult to uh, take the skin off after that point, where it w whereas it would be uh, before roasting it. Right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish getting cool. the seeds out of there. Butternut squash is super nutritious too. It's loaded full of vitamins. Vitamins A, B, and C allegedly are just chock full of it. I know um, that. My dog, she, her name is Gypsy Louise. She loves squash, like in her food. She really likes pumpkin, but sometimes I use butternut squash and she's really into that. And I feel confident as a dog parent that she's getting her vitamins. Yeah. If, if any of you are parents and you're preparing things for your children, furred or not furred, this would be a very nutritious recipe. The, uh, it really uses a lot less cheese this way too. It does. Um, the, the butternut squash is really going to bring more nutrition to the, the mac and cheese itself, but also it's going to add some amazing flavor it to it as well. Yeah. Just bring it up I'll take that the next, to a next level in the cooking. I'm going to set this over here. Okay. All right. So next we're going to rub it with a little bit of olive oil, right? Yes. So we'll go ahead and rub the base of it, or right. the inside of it. I've got our oven preheated at 350. All right. So that should do it. Whoops. About dropped my squash there. Now that squash is a runaway. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm going to put those on the same side, but then I'm going to put a spoon over here. That way this doesn't blow up right. in the cooking and have uh, the parchment yeah. come up on top of the... We're using a convection oven. Oh, right? okay. So, so if you're using a convention oven or a convection oven, it's going to depend. Right. For us, our oven has fans in the back. Yep. That's why that's so important. Correct. A lot of residential stoves have that as an option nowadays, but not everybody does. If you do have a fan in the back of your stove and your parchment gets wafted up and stuck in the back, it can damage your oven or be a risk of a fire. So that's why Grayson's got that helpful tip. Correct. If you've ever done that, which I have, it's really not a fun time. Mm -hmm. it is not. <laughs> then you gotta pick it out of the out of the fan in the back and crawl in your oven. Yep. Hansel and Gretel did it, but I'm not about to. <laughs> So while you're roasting that, I got your water boiling. Alrighty. Um, we're just using some store-bought noodles, something yep. super simple, uh, but we want to salt our water. Correct. So it's really important that when you're making noodles, your water is seasoned itself. So Grayson's going to go ahead and add some kosher salt, and he's going to add a hefty amount of it. <clears throat> and since our water is boiling, I'm going to go ahead and throw the noodles in. Um, if you want to go ahead and start on your bechamel, does that sound like a plan? And Sounds we've got a pot over here that already has your flour and your butter in it All right. for your roux. Okay. So you've got a good start hanging out over here, okay? And the roux is the thickening agent. It is flour and butter. And uh, for this sauce, we'll be using a pale roux because it is a uh, light colored sauce. So that'll be the uh, least amount of cooking time for the roux itself. And the roux is 50% flour, 50% butter. And you want to cook that so you get the flour taste out of it. Yep. Otherwise, it's a little tart and bitter. Yep. And you can have little specks floating around in your sauce if you don't cut it out or uh, yeah. cook out the flour enough. Nobody wants Which that. It doesn't look good, and it's not good to bite into a piece of raw flour. Yeah. So you're doing onions two ways, right? You're going to dice your onions, and then you're doing an onion piquette? Correct. Yeah, which is kind of so, like, it's just more or less a flavor yep. additive, right? Yep. So yeah. the uh, top layer of the onion's kind of giving me a hard time here. I'm going to take that off. Rassle it. So the onion piquette is where you take an onion and you cut it in half. I'm going to remove this top bit here. So what you want to do is you take a bay leaf and you take some cloves, whole cloves. And what you're going to do, get about two of them out, two or three. And what you want to do is take the bay leaf, put it on the uh, base of the onion, and you just push the clove into it, so that'll keep it in place. And this is really gonna enhance the flavor of your uh, sauce or soup or whatever you're using to, um, using the onion piquette in. I love an onion piquette. It's I feel amazing. like if you do your mac and cheese and you put the onion and the clove in there, it adds so much flavor. Between the aromatics of the cloves and the bay leaves and the onions, that, I mean, you just can't beat it. It Correct. makes it so, I don't know, it's, it's not like grandma's secret, but it's, it's got an element that you just can't quite pinpoint mm -hmm. with your flavor, 
profiles. And yeah. I I'm obsessed. It really, it just brings a lot to the dish itself. It really does. And we're using super high quality dairy. We're using Calder dairy. Right. Uh, Calder dairy, I love it because it's sold in a glass bottle. It just feels so traditional. Yeah. But it's also really thick and super viscous. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, okay measure out a quart. Sounds good. Those, While um, you're doing that, we can go ahead and take a break. Sounds good. All right. Sounds perfect so to me. So I've got the noodles about to be finished. Okay. So if you want to measure that out, all right. We'll be back in just a minute when my kitchen with Jake continues. I like to use cool water, but I also like to sanitize everything as I go about it. I like to use a little spray. My spray usually has a little vinegar in it. I'm gonna use these. I'm, when I put them in the refrigerator, I want them ready to go. Um, especially if you've got small children at home, they're likely to not ever sanitize anything. So just have it ready to eat, as they say. The heart of winter, it beats inside you. It's that thing urging you outside when the forecast calls for snow. Some were born with it. For others, it was carved with care. But for all who take winter to heart, it's time. Feel the rhythm of the season and pursue your pure in Pure Michigan. Michigan TV is streaming everywhere on Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and more smart TV apps. My Michigan TV is on your phone too. Take us with you wherever you go. Just search for My Michigan TV on your favorite app store or visit mymitv.com. All Michigan streaming everywhere. My Michigan TV. Welcome back to my kitchen with Jake. We're here in beautiful Chelsea, Michigan, uh, making some bechamel mac and cheese. Uh, we're here today thanks to the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association, Education Foundation, and the MichiganFoodSafety.com website. Uh, so we're hanging out here in Agricole Farm Stop, making some bechamel mac and cheese. Yes, my pal Grayson Golding. Uh, so Grayson's about to start on his 
my bechamel, roux, right? Yep. So he's going to start with a blonde roux. Correct. Um, you're going to add some of our beautiful calder dairy to it. Yep. Um, and you're going to add your paquette, right? Correct. Which is an onion, bay leaf, and clove. So an aromatic bundle of gorgeousness, right? Correct. Okay, so, so I'm going to go ahead and strain the noodles while you take care of that. Sound good? All right. So I'm going to go These are like beautifully al dente. I'm going to go ahead and get this going. I'm going to have it on a lower heat, not too high because I don't want to burn it. But I want to get this butter melted and I want to incorporate the flour into the butter. I'm just going to let that go for a minute. And then what I'm going to want to do is cook the flour in so you're not getting the, a raw floury taste when you're eating it. So you want to get that going. And then once I get this all cooked up, and the roux started, I'm gonna go ahead and put my onion paquette, uh, my calder dairy, and then my um, onions in here and get those going so that uh, the bechamel will begin to be formed. But then what you're gonna to wanna to do, once you add your uh, dairy, you're gonna to wanna to reduce it down by two thirds and then, then you will be left with your mother's sauce, which is the bechamel. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and add in our cheese. We're going to do a three cheese mac and cheese. Mm. So that's going to be quite, quite lovely once that's finished. Yeah, luscious and stringy and full of gorgeousness. Oh yeah. Well, and with that butternut squash, I yes. think that those flavors are going to accent really gorgeously. I agree with Especially that. with that fresh parm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love fresh parm. It's going to be wonderful. And then I think we're, yeah. at the end, we're going to go ahead and bake it, which will give it a nice crust to the top of it. Oh, gorgeous. And make it just that much better. This seems like such a simple little recipe, right? It like is. It's mac and cheese. Yep. But we're not craft mac and cheese. This no. is on a whole other <laughs> level. It, oh, there's yeah. some really technical skills here. That bechamel mother sauce and the idea of building it into a Mornay, those are really foundational elements of culinary arts, right? Correct. I mean, you learned bechamel in, in your ProStart program, right? I did, yep. Yeah, back so, in high school. Yep, yeah, back in high school. So you spent, how did your, how did your program run? You had Chef Sam Musto. I right? did. Yep. And you spent half of your day at Chelsea High School and then the second half um, at Celine High School? Correct. Nice. So I would, uh, I would start my day at Chelsea, go through my normal classes, and then uh, mm -hmm. around lunchtime I'd head over to Celine High School where I would be there for a couple hours and I'd just get to go through and they had a whole program for us. We'd cook everything. That's uh, awesome. And most of everything that we served, actually in fact all of everything that we made, we would serve to the school so they would be able to come up and buy it for their lunches or for breakfasts or anything. Um, That's awesome. It, yeah, it was, it was That's a great That's a good program. experience. Yeah. Yeah. You yep. work in industry now right here in town, right? I do, yep. Yeah, so you're working at a couple of the local restaurants. You're, I am. You're so, paving a path for yourself, dude. That's super exciting. I, yeah, I'm, uh, I've been very blessed with having a bunch of different kitchens I've been able to work at and uh, just a bunch of opportunities yeah. to work local. Do you especially. want me to bring that over towards you? Yes, How about please. I bring it to you? All right, thank you. Yeah, of course. That way you can stay stationed. All oh, right, right, right. Yeah, here's this. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this in real quick. Turn the heat back up. You got a, a whisk or something for you? Uh, yeah, will you grab me one? I think there's one hanging up yep. right over there. Here you are, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. And we like to use a whisk so that we break up all of those flour giblets. Yep. That way you don't end up with any lumps. Nobody wants lumpy mac and cheese. Correct. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape down what's on the side up here. Make sure that gets incorporated into the sauce. Scrape off my spatula. And I'm right as well. behind you here. Alrighty. I'm gonna stick this in here. Yep. All right. So just wanna make sure that gets nice and incorporated. Now, if you wanted to do this and you wanted to eliminate the gluten, so say we were using a gluten-free noodle, yep. what would you use as a substitute for your roux? I would use a slurry. So yeah. there's a variety of different starches that you can use in a slurry. Uh, what I like to use is arrowroot and yep. water. So you just mix the two, and then so you get a nice little paste, uh, and then you slowly add that into your sauce while you're stirring it, and that was a great thickening agent, as opposed to using flour Definitely. for your art gluten-free people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's really clever. What other allergens would we have to think about? Of course, the dairy. The dairy. Yeah, we've got dairy. We've got, technically, you could have an allium allergy with onions. Correct. Not super common. We've got our gluten. Anything else that you're concerned about? We've got the cheese, but got none of those cheese, cheese yeah. have nuts or anything nope. interesting in them. I'm thinking, I think we're good on just yeah, the two. Yeah, we're good too. Yeah. We would have to be really conscious with the oil that we chose to baste our butternut squash in. That's true. Because we could end up with a soy risk. We have no soy risk in our recipe, um, but do be conscious of the oil you choose. If you don't choose olive oil and you go with, say, a canola or a vegetable oil, sometimes they'll sneak 
a little bit of soy in there, and we don't need that. Right. No. So how's it going here? You've it's got going good. So what a big thing that I've learned at school actually. You want to make sure that your flames, if you have them too high, you can see how it's coming up on the side of the pot. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it underneath the pot because you have it coming up on the side. You're going to scorch the dairy on the side and it's going to burn and you'll have a burnt flavor and it's, it's going to ruin the sauce. Yeah, so nobody be, needs that. You got to be careful of that. So I think we're good to go ahead and add this. Yeah, I think All you're right. right. So I'm yeah. just going to go ahead and stick that in there. Awesome. And it's kind of like a tea, right? Yep. It's like an onion bay leaf clove tea. Yep. We're just going to allow it to steep mm -hmm. until that onion starts to look a little bit translucent. Yep. It start, you, you'll be able to smell it. It smells amazing. Right. Like, I wish smell-o-vision was a thing mm -hmm. so that everybody could really get that experience. Yeah, get the full. It's like, do you remember when you first started college and you made your first bechamel with a paquette in it? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that like aromaticness? Yeah. Life-changing. Wonderful. Like, I will never forget that. I had Chef Cunha down in Louisville, Kentucky when we first made that. He was like this little, he wasn't little, he was tall like you are. Right. But he had like this little mustache and he was the coolest dude. Really cutthroat. <laughs> I mean, it was like Italian or something. That's but awesome. We did paquettes and I'll never forget it. Loved it. Paquettes are, uh, just like we talked about earlier, just a great, great way to bring extra flavor into Definitely. whatever you're making. So as you can see, you're maintaining clean work surfaces as Correct. we go. So Grayson just used a diluted sanitizer to wipe off this surface. He's using it to wipe off his cutting board and his other work surfaces to eliminate any potential for cross-contamination. Correct. So if we do move something back over to this space, it's not gonna be contaminated. <laughs> All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and cut up this cheese. Like I said, we're gonna be doing a three cheese. So we have Gouda cheese, some Parmesan, some Colby Jack. And what we're gonna do is we had them sitting out so that they uh, are brought up to room temp. That way we're not adding a super cold uh, cheese into our warm sauce. Uh, that'll bring the temperature down a bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give these a nice little, oh, so I'll go, like, like we see here, we have a little bit of mold. Um, with mold, it's fine on cheese to go ahead and cut it back an inch. Uh, and then you're safe to use the rest of the cheese, but just for practicality reasons, I'm gonna use a piece without any mold on it. I'm not actually even positive that that's mold, but that's such good advice. Because if you just left it on there and you threw it in, you could be, I mean, depending on who you're serving it to, you could be putting them at risk of exposure Correct. to those spores. Correct. If you have somebody that's immune compromised in your family, whether they've you know, been through chemotherapy or they have an illness, um, exposing them to something like that could really be detrimental to their health. So making sure that you eliminate that is very, very, very important. It is. That is correct. Um, so I'm not going to do too much of any one cheese. I want to have a healthy portion of each cheese. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish grating these up here while the uh, onion is steeping. And then uh, at the end, what we're going to do before we bake it, we're going to take a little bit of the Parmesan and have that grated up real nice and fine. And we're going to put that on top of it. That way, when we bake it, it'll have a nice crust and crunch to it. That'd and have gorgeous. a nice golden brown color as well. Yeah, you're doing great. You're, I just had a flashback. I, my brain threw into the way back machine. Chef Cunha was teaching a special melt, but we were doing it for um, the Kentucky Derby. So I learned how to make a hot brown. Have you ever had a hot brown? I have not. So hot brown is the official sandwich of the Kentucky Derby. And it's an open face sandwich with like a great big slice of Texas toast and a cast iron pan with tomatoes and bacon and smoked turkey. And then it's smothered in a bechamel Ooh. Mornay. But it's a Mornay made with Gruyere. So it's just that basic bechamel that we've got back here with the onion paquette and the roux. Right. And then you pour a bunch of Gruyere in it and you emul emulsify it and you add a little bit of like chipotle-ness to it, so it's got a little bite to it, and then you just smother the entire sandwich with it, and then you bake it again. They're like, oh my God. That sounds it's delightful. so much food. They're so heavy, but they're so good. Yeah, that sounds very good. Yeah. We used to go, it was like, you could get one of those at the Brown Hotel. It's a historic hotel in downtown Louisville, mm -hmm. and we'd go as like a group of young chef friends to like experience different stuff. Right. And they've got the most incredible ceilings and great big spans of ballrooms. And we're over there, like, you know, testing and <laughs> getting flavor profiles on the real hot brown. Right. It was so good. Loved it. So how did you, have you gone to the Kentucky Derby I have, multiple yeah. times or just that one time? I did it a couple times. I did it once when I was living in college. I went on like a, like it was an infield event. Right. And it was not exactly what I thought it was. Everybody dressed up beautiful, right? But then while you're out there, it's very, 
the infield parties a little bit, which was not my vibe. Right. But it was still cool to see. That's awesome. Yeah, I got to do some work down there while like the Kentucky Derby was going on for some really incredible bed and breakfasts. Oh, awesome. Yeah, one time I got to meet um, Stevie Nicks doing it. Dang. She was in town doing something. It was so cool. Right. She's just an amazing witch of a woman. I yeah. love her. That sounds, so have you done, uh, were you like invited to come down there and do, do work or were you like, I was just, just working be... out there while I was there. Right. I was, I was like, yo, you know, working, I was going to college and I was working at a couple of different bed and breakfasts each morning, right. trying to do breakfast and stuff. And we were just doing an event and I got really lucky that day. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a fun experience to go down there and do that. Yeah, Kentucky Derby is incredible. All right, so I'm finishing up grating some cheese. I'm doing a little bit of the Parmesan separate. That way we'll have uh, some cheese for the top for to, to make our crust. Uh, but then that's about how much cheese we're going to be using for the sauce itself, which I think will be coming along. I can along. smell it, yeah. yeah it's it's coming, finally it's getting nice and aromatic. Nice and aromatic, yeah. yeah. Um, so what's the device you're using right now? A lot of people might not know what that is. Yeah, so this is a microplane. Yep. Um, and it gives you a really nice fine grate. So you can, you can really put a lot of things through here. Uh, onion, or uh, on, not onion, lemon. If you want to do some <laughs> lemon zest, uh, that'll be a nice, it's a nice way to get onion zest. Yeah. Um, you could put a piece of garlic through it. Absolutely. Uh, cheese, as you can see. If you want really fine cheese, it'll melt real quick. Yeah. Um, I or a lot of garnish thing. things too. You yeah. send through the top and have a nice garnish once Definitely. you're finished. I use mine for uh, like whole nutmegs, like oh, give yeah. it little nutmeg cloves, yep. like little balls. Send that through there. It's we, really the best way to shave some off. It is. Yeah. We, we use one of those at my house. We uh, don't buy ground nutmeg. We just buy the whole and then we grate it's it so ourselves. Much better, yeah. Isn't it? And you never get too much. Nope. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, before we add the cheese, let's take another break. And we'll be back in just a minute when My Kitchen with Jake continues. Hand me that towel. This towel? This towel looks like the, the dish rag. <laughs> I think it's time for a fresh one. Again, this is one of the big issues that we have in home use. Did you replace that towel as often as you actually should? Especially if you have small children in the house. So making sure this is clean as well. Welcome to Mackinac Island. We were just named the number one island destination in the continental U.S. by Travel and Leisure Magazine. We are proud of our little slice of paradise. And hope we have a chance to visit soon. So hop on in. And treat yourself to fascinating history. Delicious island traditions. And an unforgettable nightlife. We look forward to seeing you soon on Mackinac Island. We've all been looking forward to a return to normalcy, especially when it involves a breath of fresh air, a dip in the water, 
the chance to explore, or just the opportunity to take a break and enjoy the view. Our time is now. Start making your plans now to visit Ludington at pureluddington.com. My Michigan TV is streaming everywhere on Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and more smart TV apps. My Michigan TV is on your phone, too. Take us with you wherever you go. Just search for My Michigan TV on your favorite app store or visit mymitv.com. All Michigan, streaming everywhere. My Michigan TV. Welcome back to My Kitchen with Jake. Sponsored by the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association Education Foundation and the MichiganFoodSafety.com website. We're hanging out here at Agricole Farm Shop in downtown Chelsea, Michigan, where it is absolutely bustling with local farmers and chefs oh, yeah. that are they're in love with the local food. I mean, it's our second priority, right? Mm -hmm. Michigan community, second. Yep. Food safety first, delicious food to follow. We're hanging out with my buddy Grayson, Grayson Golding. Uh, he's a Chelsea local. Yep. Um, we're working on our bechamel mac and cheese, and things are about to get real. Oh yeah. We're going to incorporate our butternut squash. Yep. We're going to make our bechamel into a mornay, and then we're going to lace it all together and make it into the most delicious mac and cheese in all of the land. Oh yeah. So first up, butternut squash, right? Yep. Correct. So we're going to go ahead and pull that okay. out and grab a oven mitt. So these roasted for about 20 minutes at 350 degrees. We had already basted them with a little bit of olive oil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, take this off, gloves up, yep. Now technically this is still gonna be cooked a little bit because we're gonna yep, bake it. It will get cooked again. But, but because we be might not bring it up all the way, correct. it's important to wear gloves. Yep. Plus that's hotter than Billy Haiti. That is so true. So any little bit of protection we can get on our hands is glorious. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and thank you. Yep. Bring this over here. And I'm gonna get this hot sheet pan out of our way, okay? All righty, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this skin off. Do you wanna save this parchment for your extra skin giblets? Oh, uh, yes, please, thank you. All right, and we can throw the stuff away out. All righty. So norm this should just come right off. Uh, if you've got it roasted properly, it should just peel right off with these. Uh, you might wanna be a little careful though, because it can be a bit hot. Thankfully, it's not too bad. And you're done with this. What was that? You're done with this. I can pitch I it. Need, I need to get this one too oh, real okay. quick. So I'm just going to finish peeling this off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice rough chop. This one's a little bit hotter than the last one. Yeah, that, that's a hot potato. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And now Take at home, minute. we would recommend that you allow it to cool a minute. You don't need to burn yourself. Correct. And we probably could do that too. But you're... You're a hearty young man. Yes. And you're going to get it taken care of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Handled hot stuff before. Yeah. It's not. It's part of chef training, it is. right? You got to build you up your resistance. Correct. So this one here, I think, could have, since it's a little bit thicker, I didn't cut it perfectly in half. You can see this one's thicker than that one. So this could have roasted maybe a minute longer. Uh, you can tell because the, the skin is not coming off as uh, quickly and easily as it should. Yeah. We did scale it back to a half batch. So oh, if you okay. want to, yeah, All right. I think you'll be fine if you want to just cut off All what right. you can. I'm just going to get I'll this. I'll roast that later for the second half, which I'm going to make for dinner. And I'm just going to go ahead and chop this up. I'm going to cut off that bit there. We don't want that. Set that off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and just chop it up. Doesn't need to be perfect cuts. It's gonna get incorporated into the Mac. Give it one more go through. Nice. Perfect, all right. That is ready to go when we add it to our Mac. Okay, and so you're Mac, ready to add cheese to your bechamel, I know, right? That'll be the next line of action. So we're gonna bring that over here. And you do still have your paquette in there. I do, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. No, let me throw a hot pad on the table right, right quick. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and just Okay, let me get try you. and get all the the milk's still in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. Leave that with it. I'm gonna grab my whisk. Oh, it smells so good. Oh yeah, it's nice and aromatic. So I'm gonna just start whisking it as I add the cheese. You don't wanna add it all at once. You wanna do it in little, little bits, but the more that you add it and incorporate it, the larger amounts you can add in the next time. So I start with a small handful, and then I can gradually add a little bit more and a little bit more. 
and we want this to be a nice cheesy thick consistency but not too thick we want it to be able to coat the uh the noodles oh it's gorgeous and and uh stick to the noodles without being all thick and pasty all right so add a little more oh that looks so good it's Thank starting you. to get that proper oh, cheesy yeah. stringiness yep which so you, you simply can't apart. get with craft mac and cheese that is so true you gotta go all out make the all bechamel stuff mm-hmm so our bechamel is officially a Mornay. Yep. Official. So you can see it's starting to thicken up more so than where it was at and get that nice cheesiness to it. All right, so it's almost there. You want to make sure you get all the lumps out of it. Oh, it looks so good. And really incorporate the cheese. And we cooked our noodles, we strained them, and then we put just a little bit of butter on them so that yep. they could sit while we finished up our Mornay. That way they don't adhere together and get sticky and weird, but that butter is gonna go really good with that Mornay. Oh yeah, so you can see it getting nice and stringy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pour this in. Okay, I'll bring your onions over as well. All right, I might not add all of them. I'm gonna add that, see where that brings us. So, oh, do you have the spatula? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and take that and just incorporate that up. All right, so might need to add all, a little bit more. I don't want it to be Right. So I'm gonna add I a mean, bit can more. you really have too much cheese? That's I mean, true. Grayson. I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> We're in Chelsea, we America. Are. It is true. We gotta go all out. <laughs> so then we also sauteed up some onions. We did. These are the beautiful onions from Tantre Farms. Oh yeah. I think I have used more onions from Tantre Farms this year than I have ever used before ever. Like any onions ever. They have some good onions there. Dude, they're awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the. Uh, Roasted butternut squash as well. Get a little bit oh, that looks that. really good. Smelling amazing too. Are we gonna bake yep. it in that stock pot? That one I can go so. in the oven. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so let's do it. Just finish doing that, and then we're gonna put that cheese on top mm. of it. Give it a nice crust. All right. Flatten that out a bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and coat the top of it. Oh my goodness. Get a little bit more. So I was just teaching a uh, bechamel sauce for outdoor cooking for right. some Girl Scouts over this past weekend. And it, a lot of them kind of made it a little too dark because they did it over the fire, um, but they would be really into this. Those Girl Scouts would be obsessed. Oh yeah. All right, so we can go ahead and put this in the oven. All right. Get the door for you. Oh, we're going to have to take out a rack. That's all right. I'm actually just gonna lower this one. Sweet. Awesome. You bake and rest easy, okay? <laughs> Give that a minute to get nice and golden brown. All right, so we can do some dishes yep. while we are on a break, right? So we'll be right back when My Kitchen with Jake continues. I use on this wood counter is my sponge. Oh, I'm and, checking it. Yeah. And again, that is one of those situations in most home kitchens where the sponge looks like this. So that can be a real issue for us too because especially if it's kept wet all the time, it's definitely going to breed bacteria. Perfect there. environment. Yeah. what you make of it. It's feeling the sun warm your skin and a cool lake wash away your cares. Pure is turning a lighthouse into your North Star and letting a ride through the woods turn into dinner by the shore. It's taking it all in and never taking anything for granted. 
the sun sets, the moon rises, and you realize the end of one perfect summer day is the beginning of another. Pursue your pure in Pure Michigan. My Michigan TV is streaming everywhere on Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and more smart TV apps. My Michigan TV is on your phone, too. Take us with you wherever you go. Just search for My Michigan TV on your favorite app store or visit mymitv.com. All Michigan, streaming everywhere. My Michigan TV. Welcome back to My Kitchen with Jake. We'd like to thank the MRLA EF and the MichiganFoodSafety.com website for their sponsorship. Um, I'd also like to thank Agricole Farm Stop for this gorgeous kitchen space and for all of this incredible food uh, that was produced here locally. Um, I'd also like to thank you, Grayson, for uh, coming to our show. Of course. Um, we've baked our gorgeous bechamel mac and cheese uh, for about 25 minutes until that Parmesan was a gorgeous crust on top. Oh, yeah. We're going to call it golden <laughs> brown, yeah? Nice. So let's go ahead and plate this up. Right. The most important thing is for food safety that this is ready to eat food meaning that we've got our protective barrier on, our hands, our gloves, um, and we've washed our hands, right? Yep. We're using all clean uh, surfaces, and we're just plating it up. Right. So a little bit of fresh thyme, because this is garnish. such a good time, right? <laughs> and then you already put a little nice crack of pepper on there. Yep. I like a little more. All right, I'm gonna yep. hit it with a little bit more. You know, it's high season, that way yep. it's not all going in the same spot. And I would say that that is one delicious dish, I wouldn't would, you? I would agree with you on Absolutely that. Absolutely gorgeous. We'll be back in just a minute when my kitchen with Jake continues. Where's our kitchen at right now? We've decluttered. We've... Wiped down. What do we wipe it down with? Hot soapy water. Hot soapy water works. What other sanitizing options do we have? Well, there's lots of different things I can use, right? I can use... Bleach. Undiluted vinegar, a tablespoon of bleach, and a quart of water, right? Works good. We can use a store-bought sanitizer. Spray sanitizer. Yeah, or we can even use our dishwasher. Well, it's kind of hard to put my beautiful... Week has brought so many events to our community. It has been such an incredible benefit to local area bars and breweries like ours. I think just the fact that there is such a thing is pretty special for our community. To taste great craft beer, craft wine, craft spirits uh, in the Kalamazoo community and see what we really have to offer. been an awesome opportunity to see everyone come together again and just enjoy the craft beverage scene. No matter where you choose to go for a Kalamazoo Craft Beverage Week, you won't be disappointed. Pure is what you make of it. It's feeling the sun warm your skin and a cool lake wash away your cares. Pure is turning a lighthouse into your North Star and letting a ride through the woods turn into dinner by the shore. It's taking it all in and never taking anything for granted. The sun sets, the moon rises, and you realize the end of one perfect summer day is the beginning of another. Pursue your pure in Pure Michigan.
are connected to our Lake Huron shoreline, all 93 miles of it. Hidden bays and marinas dot our shores. Points of entry to our world. Open waters and waves, alive with people at play. Inspiration floats on sparkling waves. We are in awe of its strength and in love with its allure. We nurture it, play in it, savor it. Huron County Waters. My Michigan TV is streaming everywhere on Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and more smart TV apps. My Michigan TV is on your phone too. Take us with you wherever you go. Just search for My Michigan TV on your favorite app store or visit mymitv.com. All Michigan, streaming everywhere. My Michigan TV. Welcome back to My Kitchen with Jake. We're just cleaning up here at Agricole Farm Stop, finishing up a long day of recording um, with our wonderful guest, Grayson Golding. Uh, we're, we've made a beautiful bechamel mac and cheese. Um, we've spent the day hanging out in sunny Chelsea, Michigan, doing some incredible cooking with local food, uh, delicious food, and safe food. Um, we'd like to thank you all for hanging out with us. Uh, you can catch our show on My My TV. Um, and on michiganfoodsafety.com. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Michigan Restaurant Lodging Association Education Foundation. Uh, and we'd like to thank Agricole Farm Stop for the incredible kitchen space that we get to, to host our show from. Uh, thanks, and join us again next time.